to And Here's Modi. Hi, everybody, and welcome to And Here's Modi. We have a very, 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 very special guest, Matteo Lane. I'm going to read uh, the bio. The, no, not yeah, no, I, it's so good. No, no, no don't. It's humiliating. It, it's, time I'm no. <laughs> wait, New York-based comedian whose stand-up God. special can be seen on Netflix, comedy lineup, The Late Show, Stephen Bear, The Late Night with Seth Miles, Comedy Central, Adam Devine's House. I never heard of that. Party the Week and the Comedy Cellar, the Comedy Jam, HBO's Crashing, Fluent in they Five Languages, and <laughs> with singing, with singing in, in six octaves. Matteo lives in lived in Italy as an oil painter and opera singer before starting his comedy career and on the seventh day he rested <laughs> yeah i should just say desperate one big parenthesis desperate i mean no, where do we even and, start? Then, and then perry elch chimed in on the chat and said you can also find him naked or making pasta on instagram that's true i have done naked but that's actually not true i did not like a naked not naked but but revealing. i did a lot of news before but then i went and deleted them because everyone's getting like reported on instagram it's like oh it's like all my butt pictures i just like archive all of them so now now i'm fully clothed well i mean you have to save these pictures wah, wah, wah. Wah, one day people are gonna you, one day you're gonna want to show those pictures no yeah I'm, i don't mind being naked i'm like that's fine i'm like i'm gonna like when i'm like in my early hundreds on my deathbed <laughs> i'll be like good for you Mikhail. back in my day like when i have no teeth left so i'm pretty happy about it i think you, you'll, you'll have teeth you'll have teeth you, you, yeah, you, well, you, you keep yourself together <laughs> you keep yourself oh, if not, you'll have them all in a cup by your bed. Yeah. <laughs> but um, is that a chuckle? Um, but you guys recently, Matteo recently went to um, was on the on the with Chelsea Handler on the um, on the Kimmel show. Yes, I was. <laughs> I did couch, which is kind of a, it was so chic. It was so fun. And yeah. Leo went. Leo, I had a show, but Leo went down and hung out with you. I know Leo's like, oh, I want to come meet Chelsea. He's like. Go ahead. And I didn't, th I thought you were just saying it in jest. And then he was like, no, I'm serious. I I'll really want to come. Up. I was like, come, you can come. That's fine. <laughs> and then you got to meet Paris Hilton on the same day and Bob the Drag Queen. And it was, it like was, a, a, it it was, was your birthday. Weekend. Yeah, it was my birthday. It was fun. It was a little LA. And you were so cute on the show. And pa Paris didn't give much, but she it was yeah. fun to probably just see her. Well, it was funny because afterwards, like, I really wanted to take pictures with her. And she had, like, a whole lighting crew with her. Like, yeah, like lighting a whole editing. production. And Jacob's, Jacob, Bob's boyfriend, stepped into action. He came out as if he was, like, my publicist, manager, agent, all at the same time. <laughs> he was like, okay, Mateo Paris, we're going to get you together for some photos. That's it. Work. You look great. Like, he was, like, Austin Powers. And <laughs> even I believed him. I was like, oh, God, great. You know? And so we took these photos and... It was funny because we had just watched her cooking show. So I said, right. oh, I loved your cooking show. And she goes, thanks. You're funny. I was like, thanks. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And then when we took the photos, I am uncomfortable around famous people. So I was like, oh, like, you know, nice. to." I just assume everybody wants you out of their way. So I'm like, nice to meet you, like ready to walk away. And she went to hug me, but I'd already turned. So oh. now she was like back <laughs> hugging me. Oh. So I like kind of patted her arm. Oh, you know what I mean? Wow. You didn't tell me this. I didn't know. I didn't see this interaction. He was shy. He wouldn't come out. I was like, you, you were shy there? I was a little shy. I've never seen. He was more nervous than me. I could have. <laughs> I was like almost in REM sleep. They're like, Mateo, you're on. I was like, okay, hold on. Like, hey, is there no? I was snack? sweating in the Mateo's green room, like sweating. And then they're like, here she comes, here she comes. And then like Paris Hilton walked by and it was like in the movies when like in slow-mo, the hot girl like walks down the hallway. Like and she just camera. like did it like a this to me. But and I, I was like, Done. That was it. That was but you worth. on your on your couch on the couch. You said that there's a, a gaggle of gays in the back. Yes, I said there are gaggle gays in the back who were looking at her like a, a comet that comes by once every twelve years. Like, <laughs> you know, was, like there it is. You we know, were like, like we're waiting for her. It was it was she, literally the same. Like when a comet's coming, you first you sit outside and you're sort of just waiting. Like it's gonna come. It took ten minutes <laughs> because the the people who were working there also helped us. Those girls were so sweet. Yeah, I don't know if they, they were, were interns or writers, but they were so nice. And I said, look, I'm standing in this story because me and my friends want to meet Paris Hilton and that's the reality. And they're like, we're going to stand here and pretend to talk. I said, like, great. And then they were like, five minutes, five minutes. And yeah, they helped. Yeah, they, they were great. She had a whole lighting crew and then she had her microphone on, but because she stomps when she walks, like she's got a very specific, it was, it was, do you remember that? It was very, she clops, she clops. She does. In a, in a like, a, like a Clydesdale, like she's a, walking down like that, really. It's like a, yeah. I mean, she's a tall girl. More, yeah. more like a centaur, but she, um, <laughs> but it was great. I mean, it's like, that's oh, why she's famous is because she knows how to walk, she knows how to talk. Oh, the whole thing. So she was, she did that stomp and then her microphone just fell off. And the, the, you could see the mic guy go, oh. 
<laughs> she's got to go schlep it underneath her skirt and the whole thing. Oh, wow. Oh, it was great. Chelsea was great. And it was fun. To, I've never done couch. Like I've only done late night, late night. I've done three late night shows where you do stand up and it's so different. They, it's not that you're treated like shit, but it almost feels like <laughs> kind of like the open mic world where it's like. An people, afterthought. Yeah, well, people are like, you better do four minutes. You have to do it exactly how we right. want. You better. Sh and then like no one had any problem with what I was saying when I was on the couch. Yeah. Right. Fully fine. I was like, yeah, I should go have sex with this guy. Like, and if that was a late night set, they'd be like, you can't say this. You can't say right. that. And Chelsea was like, but I say whatever you want. They kept it all. Like they didn't yeah. have anything. That's amazing. Like, it was really great. It was, uh, it was great. And uh, it, yeah, when you, when you do a, a four minute spot on one of those shows, it's like you're there as the, like the catering. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, it, the four minutes get off and it feels like not organic to the show. Sometimes it's like so much pressure, like four minutes, go be funny, but be funny with the way our like late night booker told you to be funny. Right. Like and late night bookers are it's that that to me is the funniest job in the world. People <laughs> who have zero talent it's, who are like, OK, you can't say this word and reverse that joke here. I'm like, I think I know what works well in this. Yeah. Like, but and they, I'm totally not appropriate. For but they night. need to to they, they need to make a reason for their job. Yeah. So that their job is, you know, once every blue moon, someone does a four minute set on the show right. and they have to. The purpose of their job is that they know what's going to work for the show or not. And it's 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 not a great thing, because if you think about it, Comedy is a professional. It's a craft. It's the most difficult. It's one of the it, most difficult, difficult things to do. It's like, you know, in a hospital, when, a, when they hire a doctor or they bring a doctor, uh, who hires him? Other doctors. Right. Not like somebody from, uh, from, for, for, from the reception. <laughs> right. Right. So like when, you're hiring, when you're hiring a comedian and working out his set, it should be another comic yeah. doing it. Not, um, not well, somebody who well, a lot of his TV way from the writers mail. fancy themselves c comedians. Yeah, you know? but they are. I mean, a lot of them. It is. It is a certain type of comedy to be able to sit and write jokes like that. But I think with bookers, if you weren't the, actually the best booker I ever dealt with was Seth Meyers' booker. I don't think she works there anymore. But when I tell you they had zero notes on my set, I mean really? zero. I literally could have handed her like a murder note. She's like, "Great, see you Tuesday at four. <laughs> I was like, oh, "Okay, like." That's the way it should have been, you know, you know, and but I understand like they're doing a job and I'm I'm like, he's right. Like, I can't say that on TV. You know what I mean? Like, he's absolutely right. Like in his in his defense. But it's like I think certain people don't understand how to talk to talent. And there is a talent in knowing how to speak to talent. For because sure. yes, if you want artist. to bring an artist on your show and have them express themselves and do the best that they can possibly do, you can't scold them and belittle them because it makes them feel like what they're doing isn't worth your time. And it's so backwards. It's like, no, I'm the guest. Mm -hmm. I'm right. the one you've reached out to to ask if I want to do this. So I'm at this point, I'm done ever doing a late night set again. Well, good for you. Well, I'm really? glad I was there for your final. No, uh, no, no, you, no were there, you were not there for a set. No, you were not I there mean, for a I set. mean, the late night, one of your, I mean, a late night. You know what my favorite part was when we went to uh, Taylor, the stylist? Oh, my friend Taylor O'Rear, who styled me for the show. And he picked out all these clothes for you. And we were, you were like, yes, 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 no, no, no. And then. Um, it was so fun to watch. Yeah, the whole when process. Neil texted me, what, what the style? I mean, what, what's the, it's a t-shirt or a crop t-shirt? What what could be no, styling it, for it, it, a thong? A thong. <laughs> he uh, there was some options pulled, and he had interesting feedback on like what looks good on TV, and you looked great. Yeah, I thought Taylor picked a really good outfit. By the way, I just don't want anyone to think I'm like sounding verbose or complaining about like. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, like, yes, with, yes. I'm just having an honest conversation about like this frustration between artists and bookers and what that looks like. I mean, one of the reasons I love the seller is because they're like, are you funny? Good work. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Did yeah. you show up on time when you're funny? Great work. It's, well, I think that it's like, there are some like general things. Like you can't say like these words on certain shows, but when you're dealing with people at like your level of professional and talent, it's like, you know, what's going to be funny and like, you know, what set you want to do. So to give those kinds of notes to like, people like the two of you seems insane to me. It's like one well, thing if there is like general, like don't say the word cunt. On <laughs> well, yeah. I open with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I agree. Like I think like in retrospect, maybe I have to cut this out because I don't want it to like, is it, <laughs> we'll is, is this interesting at all? I, I think it's interesting how they get an insight as to yeah. what's happening. Well, because there, there are good bookers, I guess I'm backtracking a little bit like, 
I, I guess it just would have been better if like they had reached out to me and said, hey, can you send me a transcript that's TV friendly? Sorry if I didn't explain that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not going to work back and yeah, forth yeah, with yes. you like of, that. Yeah. I just need to know like the process for every person. But, aren't they but going now through I feel your bad manager? and I sound verbose and I'm never going to work again. Aren't <laughs> they? You'll be working. Uh, y- your schedule is packed. So tomorrow I go to Miami Yeah. and then I go to... Uh, Montreal, and then I go to Chicago, and then I'm back in New York for two weeks, and then I go to P-Town, and yeah. Yeah, Good I for you for your... remembering. Good for you for remembering. <laughs> that's you're about going. as far I, as I can that's remember. That's more, it. I, t- a week out. I'm, I'm a week out, then I have no idea where I am. I just a remember because I'm out. not coming home, so oh. it's like I have to pack oh accordingly. God. Well, thank God you, you're, you guys are, this is what you wear on stage. I have a suit I schlep with me everywhere. Yeah, By the way, it's great being the camp counselor yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> how, yeah. How is volleyball it's today, guys? It's 150 degrees outside, I know, outside, I, I mean, I couldn't sit here in shorts, but it works for you, you guys very, I mean, very well. I hope I don't I'm sound sorry. verbose. I'm really sorry, everybody. No, no we can take that out if you want, but I think it's just, people love the insight. I don't know if is it professional to talk shit about people and like your experiences? No, or like, not at all. You're not talking shit and you're also not naming names so yeah i don't think you're talking shit i mean i think it's like a fair and reasonable thing to discuss your experience and the way in which artists should be treated i mean i I will say i'm i think i'm slightly bitter is because it's like years ago i did a show and they never aired it because the notes were that it was too gay and so yeah, that's I was crazy. I was like I'm very like trepidatious when it comes to like artist talent management where you do a show and like I've just it's like it's a lot of That is so criticism. offensive. I mean, welcome. But it's, like, I know, you know what I mean but like it's, shocker. It's, but but yeah, so I think I'm just like a little like trigger uh happy when it comes to like yeah. like people of authority telling Somebody actually stuff. said that to you? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Oh. It's like someone saying to me, too they were Jewish. right. I, I came out in a sundress. <laughs> 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 they weren't wrong. And Leo, Leo, Leo also has a thing. Leo doesn't do sh- shidduchim. What's shidduchim? Ma- You're going to learn making. A word. A Matchmaking. Oh, trying to matchmake me? Yeah. yeah. He, has, look, he has friends. Look, we have friends. And he says only two people in the world would he ever try to put a match together. I don't meddle. Doesn't yeah. I don't meddle unless I'm specifically asked to get involved. I don't ask questions. I don't insert myself into situations because I don't like it when people do it to me. However, I am actively trying to find Mateo a husband. It, you know, when we get, it was gonna, <laughs> no, but it's 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 just funny that like he no. To, if you're volunteering to to make a match with somebody, you're really putting yourself. I'm a great wingman. Matchmaker, matchmaker, yeah. make me a match. Find me a find you me a and our friend Andrew. Night after Those are night in the dark, I'm alone. You know, I don't know any more of it because so I only know it from Mrs. Doubtfire. Bring me no ring, broom me no groom, catch me no catch. Monkey pox. Oh, I no. a match. Okay, I know Yentl. Oh, oh. Uh, father, do you hear me? But I love her in a forest with like palm olive fingers. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah. like zero disguise trying to look like a man in 1891 in Eastern <laughs> Europe. You know what I mean? Where like it was so specific. Like speaking of gender back then, like forget <laughs> about it. Like the, and, and she's just in a forest like, <laughs> and my father, I'm like, Barbara, you're not even attempting to, to like be a to man. be a man. You there know? were so many mistakes in that movie. Oh, I, but I love Yentl. I don't know. I mean, mistakes like uh, Jewish mistakes. mistakes. Oh, like that only Orthodox Jews would catch. Like when they sat down to eat bread. Before you eat bread, there's a whole thing. You have to go wash your hands. You have to say a special breath. They just sat down. How are you? It was well, just she like, definitely knows how to wash with those palm olive fingers. Yeah, was, but it was. It was. Uh, I remember watching that movie. I was like, oh wow, that's not what they would do. That's not. They would. But she was amazing. She's Barbara Streisand. Yeah, she's Barbara Streisand. I love her. I'm obsessed. With did her. you ever see her live? Yes, I did. I saw her three years ago with my aunt Cindy, and she was doing like three concerts in America, and one of them was in the United Center. And my aunt Cindy and I are obsessed with Barbara Streisand. I grew up listening to Barbara. Streisand with my aunt Cindy. So oh. we, we bought the tickets immediately and literally we're standing there. The, the second she came out, we both started bawling. <laughs> really? Bawling. Because she's saying this, she changes the lyrics to um, this one song and she comes out and, she, and it, she made it all about Chicago. Uh-huh. So it's like Barbara in Chicago with my Zia. I was just like, sobbing it just Your like we were like Barbara I love you like oh and then she God. sang with Ariana Grande because it was what? during Lollapalooza wow Ariana Grande came out and they sang enough is enough is enough and she uh. played Donna's song 
Oh my god, it was it was awesome. It was great. I loved That's it. That's amazing. I saw her once at, at Madison Square Garden, and it was amazing seats. It was like which concert? The nineteen ninety six concert. Wow! 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 I was, he was not like, expecting brrr, that. Boop. It was like during well, Prince not, of Tides. No, it was during it was during a uh, second George Bush. So oh. she had imitators of him, like they, it bombed. Yes, this was like it 2000 bombed. bombed. But six or something. the experience I had was really strange because three rows in front of me was Bill Clinton. Really? Oh my God. So that was like, like the energy of that and the energy of him. And it's a lot of energy in one space. It was a lot. And it was. I, she's, yeah, she, I saw the YouTube videos of her singing a Happy Days Are Here Again with George Bush, a George Bush impersonator. Yes, that was that. Was that. So funny. I love her. She's. Great. She's great. Um, you're great. Sure. We uh we You are. So that's yeah, why and I'm, that's why he would make a match. So if you were yeah. if you were to have a match, mm. what is what is what you My type is a hot man that no, hates me. No, 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 not type. <laughs> not type. <laughs> what did he say? Wait, Leo, say that Leo, again? Leo, a hot Leo man that hates said, me. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, Leo always says when he was looking for somebody, he wanted somebody funny, spiritual, and culturally different from me. Right. Well, then I should date Fran Leibowitz. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend it's a city. <laughs> yeah, I would date Fran Leibowitz. So I would probably. Would, what would be your, I would date Fran would Leibowitz your, too. Obviously not. Um, obviously, it's got to be somebody attractive. But sure, yeah. Um, I would love someone who like. I would love someone that makes me laugh a lot. You know, sometimes it's like that's a tall order from a comedian. Though. Yeah, like I'll date Keith Robinson, but um, <laughs> I mean, him and I basically did date during the pandemic but um oh yeah i like y'all's relationship because isn't it cute like yeah, it's they work well with each other they enjoy each other's lives they enjoy each other's company they make each other laugh everyone likes leo which is rare like you hear that if a comic <laughs> brings another partner around it's yeah like, oh god yeah. but leo's like sit down <laughs> like sd loves you like oh, everyone likes oh, leo god yeah. so i'm like oh that would be nice to have like a you know what i mean a partner and and I don't know. Like my ex, Kiki and I really did work well with each other, but he's in Spain and and I'm here. That's just too hard. And I've never dated. I've only had two boyfriends my whole life. Yeah. The rest of us just been open mics and working and working yeah. and working. So. I feel like you need a polyglot. I feel like you need someone that you could like speak multiple languages. You could speak to them in like Italian, French, English, all in the same conversation. I feel like so you have need to date someone from Switzerland. Yeah. Or, but it has to be somebody who's like really good at something that you are not. don't do. Oh, like good luck finding video that. Games. Oh, wow. I, that's that would be right. a dream. Me sit down too. and like a gamer. play video. Yes. Like I would love to play yeah. like a hot gamer. So okay, like okay. we can be Elden Ring together. That would be a dream. Because every time I want to play video games, like around guys, like would it like. Yeah. Um, I feel Sorry. like you need to be with somebody who's really good at something that you're not amazing at. I'd like well, so, I'd like someone that because I'm really insecure and I tend to go superficially for things because it validates like the inner <laughs> part of myself that still battles like struggles with myself. So obviously going for good looking guys and then we obviously have nothing in common. We sit and like they can't spell mom backwards and I'm like, listen, <laughs> go, which is a Joan Rivers joke. But, you know, it's like I would love to find I mean, honestly, I know that sounds like cheesy, but like someone who loves video games, cooking, you know. That you can spend time with, and I'm not like a big going out guy. You know, you're not. You, you're. It's funny how you're like a like an iconic gay comedian, but you don't go to iconic gay events. No, I talk about this with Bob the drag queen a lot and Monet because Bob and Monet were like in a they're part of my crew, and we're all we love them. sort of well known gay performers. But like, we're, whenever we get free time, we just hang out and watch YouTube together. Really? Like you were there. Yeah. Leah was there. Like, that's all we do. You ordered pizza and watch YouTube. Order pizza, watch YouTube, and Hilarious. just laugh. And I think it's like, I don't know. It's like, I enjoy the work. I don't know actually how to like relax and party. And I don't know what to do with myself. But I, I didn't know either till I met Leo. I had no idea. That? I just worked. I worked and I thought the temperature and the weather in New York was always fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he said, this is not okay. <laughs> Florida for the winter. He said to me, this is not okay. This is cold. So this is not, we can't cold. live here. I'm the same as you. And we, I was like, I'm just okay. Well, you're I, from Chicago. I mean, today. Well, I walk, I, the, I, people say that all the time. Like you're from Chicago. Like I walk around in a Speedo in winter. Like I'm used to it. <laughs> like, no. It does have some weight, but. If anything, like ethnically, I shouldn't like call a Mexican, a town. I'm not used to cold. Yo. I hate cold, but I love New York. I love no, no. New York is New York. I can. But you are right. My it would be. I should go to Miami for. So you're a big foodie. 
You love to cook. Mm-hmm. I'll, you post a lot of pasta content on yes. your Instagram and your YouTube, which I enjoy. And I really love the story about you causing drama in the pasta community. The, oh, with the Italian Alfredo? Yeah. Yes. Would you like to tell? Them? Sure. I admit. Okay. <laughs> Where do I even begin? This is so Italian. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, you caused some international beef. I did. I yeah. made it. I made an off the cuff joke at the seller. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to put up before I film my special. I need to figure out like what jokes I can just put up online. So when I had this really funny interaction with this Italian guy in the front row and, and he, he, I was like, oh, this is like your first time in America. He's like, yes. Uh, and I was like, have you had fettuccine Alfredo yet? And he's like, I don't know what that is. Uh, and I'm like, you've never been to the Olive Garden? He goes, what? A what? Uh, and then I look at the audience <laughs> and like, oh, you guys didn't know that fettuccine Alfredo wasn't authentic. Like, that's not real, you losers. And everyone was laughing. And then I posted it and then it exploded <laughs> between Americans being like, what the fuck do you mean it's not real? And then the Italians being like, grazie Matteo, it's not the real hotel of the world. And then a, a restaurant called Alfredo alla Scrofa from Rome started messaging on all the everyone like, we are real, we exist. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I messaged them in Italian. I was like, allora, ma, you know, like whatever. They like, they said to me in Italian, noi siamo veri, like we're real. Vieni a Roma, ti faccio vedere come si fare la fettuccina Alfredo. Come to Rome and I'll show you how to make fettuccina Alfredo. I'm like, vabbè. And I was going to Rome the next week. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So oh, God. I was like, arrivo la prossima settimana. I'm coming the next week. And so I texted my friend Francesco Di Carlo, who's an Italian comedian. And he's really funny. You guys should check him out. He also does English stand-up. I was like, Francesco, we got to get a camera guy. We got to go to this place and have the real fettuccine Alfredo. He's like, I will tell everyone. So <laughs> he, he got a camera guy. This so there so I emotional. am in Rome and we, we, we're standing in front of Alfredo and we walk in and this guy is 22. His name is Tommaso. The, the son of the owner had this huge table for us. They were so nice to us and they sat down with us and they explained the history so of the dish did you see the light? You saw the and, light? You understood now? Well, Fettuccine Alfredo is, is a dish that came from the early 1900s and a guy named Alfredo made this dish which is pasta al burro parmigiano which is what all Italian kids eat pasta with butter and parmesan, right? But they made mm. the fettuccine in a really specific way and and, and emulsified the, the butter and the parmigiano in a really specific way and it creates this cream but there is no cream in it, right? And so... That's what the real dish is. And it it was got bastardized yeah. into what you get at Olive Garden. Americans added cream and garlic and parsley on it. So I've told you this before, but I literally learned how to make pasta from watching Mateo's Instagram videos. Oh, My very- husband is like a serious Yes. cook like he cook I don't do anything in the kitchen and my nine year old eats all of your pasta dishes oh, which is literally like cool. oh wow That's yeah it's- I learned how to make rice from watching Joe Coy <laughs> really Joe <laughs> Coy taught you how to make rice Joe Coy in his special uh, how to how much water to put in and he does the thing with the finger I'm like oh that's exactly how I need to do it <laughs> wait the, I don't know the finger trick it's a, that's you, how much water you how much water in. you need Oh, wow. Oh, the rice. And it was like, oh, That's oh. so fascinating. I actually so, don't know how to make rice. <laughs> it was a, it was a <laughs> clip. It was, a, it was like a, a, a 30 second clip of, of Joe Coy just talking about obviously making rice. And everybody in this audience knew exactly what he was talking about. Right. I had no idea. And I went to the kitchen, put the thing, my fingers this much above the rice and bam, perfect rice. There you go. So you see? Yeah, I just- Cooking with comics. Cooking with comics. Yeah, I think it's everybody's, every comic is cooking. Tom Papa does the, Bread. you always have something with Tom Papa. You yeah, always, well, we have, I've been trying to teach him how to make carbonara now for like three years. And every time he <laughs> texts me, he's like, does this closer? I'm like, <laughs> really. he's busy with his Holocaust he bread. Bre- <laughs> that bread that, 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 from that the bread, that, 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 what's the from, bread the, from Mount Vesuvio. The, like the, he's what? mad at me. I couldn't do his podcast this week. I felt bad. But no. do you cook? Do either one of you cook? No, well, but Leo can order sushi. I can order with the best of them. The best Mateo. sushi. He, he, can, he knows exactly how much for the amount of people that are coming over. <laughs> cool. I need to come over and cook for you guys, but then Let's you're go. kosher, so I can't. No, no you, I mean, I, you, whatever you cook, we'll just get you the ingredients that are co- kosher and just no, no, no meat. You no, are, because he wants to make like pancetta. never spoken to an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Italians don't do substitutions. No, but That's like so not cheap, Italian. as long as it's not meat. What do you mean not meat? Like not pork or not car, like car, um, Just, like beef. Okay, you yeah. can't mix milk and meat. Oh, we, okay. Right. I'll make you cacio e pepe. Okay. Yes. Okay, as long as pepe is parv. Parv? Yeah, it's, it's pepper. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's have, parv? I mean, no meat and no milk in it. There's no milk in it. It's just You're pepperoni learning. romano, okay. which is a type of sheep's milk cheese. Perfect. You can have that. Yes. And then pepper <laughs> and yes. pasta water. Amazing. Yeah. And Perfect. then pasta. Okay, and so you let's can't do have that. Carbonara. And no. after I watched you make Cacio e Pepe on Instagram, I decided that I was going to make it. And I went out and because I am like the worst person in the kitchen ever I bought like a piece of pecorino romano that was like this big I made it once and then it turned green and <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's not cheap that's why we don't cook because no because our lifestyle is not conducive to cooking I don't know how to wow. go grocery shopping when we're going to be home like for Tuesday now. and Thursday and then flying out and again. then we're like and then we come back for one day like, and well I, I order most of my meals like they're like meals just sent to me so like I can't stay on a diet and blah 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 but when I want to cook it's like oh okay I'll go to Italy and get my ingredients and, and just depends, yeah person. like depends on what I'm making yeah, yeah. but I love cooking we're not, I'm, I'm not a foodie I'm not yeah, if, if Modi could take a pill and just be done eating for the day, he would. Yeah. You would really? Just, yeah. yeah, it's not my it's, You told me that you could give him cat food and he would be like, This is so delicious. I mean, he was <laughs> the things I was making <laughs> during the pandemic were horrific and you were just like I was so happy he would make this brown rice and a piece of salmon and I I was I was so happy that's all I can do folks it was great and I see the rice was from Trader Joe's in a bag he put it in the microwave for two minutes I was like he's making a whole meal this is so great like my friend Nick he's like I don't grocery shop I'm not repeating myself I hate it this is terrible everyone's the worst but I I grew up with my brother and sister and I like we're all one year apart so we're just like three little ducklings following my mother. Oh, and that's you're so the youngest. Cute. Yeah, I'm the youngest. Yeah. I'm the baby. And I could have I could have told you that. <laughs> it, yeah, I'm 36. I'm a baby. Uh, <laughs> but no, my my mom every night for dinner she made it like fun for us. So we would make oh. dinner with her every single night and so it was like watching so the nice. pizza dough rise and cooking pasta or making meatballs None or like of that. so all that. of us love cooking and it feels very like na- it's also like a way to like express your love or like everything's in the kitchen at my zia's house like at my aunt cindy like on sunday like everything's about the, the, the it's like this like symbiotic sort of synergy with the food and like expressing yourself i don't know i, I love Food. I love cooking for other people. It's and your love language. Yeah. We don't. We don't. My my mother has her stables. Oh, but staples. they are bomb. They're the, they're amazing. The Moroccan mom, fish. The Moroccan never, fish. I've never had brisket. Oh. Oh my husband. My mother makes brisket as if the Jewish New Year cannot come in unless she makes that brisket. <laughs> Wait, can we do she a thing? She cooks it for like five days before, and then for like two days after, everybody's going. <laughs> Why? It's it just becomes so it's stringy. stringy. It's so stringy. It falls off when it's done. Properly. I mean, that sounds good. Yeah. I don't know. It's delicious. It's, delicious, it's marinating yeah. for like days. And Dina's it, brisket. Oh, it's, Dina's brisket it's is insane. Next level. Um, but that was my mom had the staples, and that was it. But they were always a hit. The schnitzel. The the what is schnitzel? Breaded. Chicken, chicken parmesan. Chicken, no, oh, okay, it's cool. not with chicken without, parmesan. But without, before you not put cotoleta. the sauce. Yeah, it's the cotoletta. No. Yeah, cotoletta. And then... Uh, you have cotoletta, no? I have it's, no idea can you have eggs, flour, yes, bread crumbs, 100%, milk? Yes, 100%. 100%. Not milk, but yes. You so can't you, mix milk and egg? No, you can't mix milk and the chicken. You can't mix, mix milk I, and meat. Okay, could I do this for you? My mom makes... It's like her own version of like a white sauce she just made up when we were kids. It's like a mix of cacio pepe, carbonara, and alfredo. It's literally mm. butter, egg yolk, Yum. milk, parmigiano reggiano, and pepper, and some garlic. Can you have that yes. on pasta? Yes. Okay, I'll make that for you. It's really okay. good. And guanciale. And we'll no, no guanciale. <laughs> and we'll get you brisket. Yeah. Rosh Hashanah, we'll, Rosh Hashan, we'll okay. get you brisket. Great. Um, and uh, But that was, that was our, that was our, we were never foodies. We just had those amazing dishes she had, and that was it. Done. And you love all her food. I love all her food. Food is like a pretty major part of Israeli culture as much yeah. as it is Italian. Well, the Jew- Jewish and Italians are so paisan, especially yeah. in New York, because I guess the way that everyone was, the neighborhoods yeah. were pushed around in New York, That's Jewish true. and Italians were always together. And even now in New York, and also Jewish and Italians, I find it were like, the way we're sort of spread around the country is the same, like only in urban areas like New York, right. Los Angeles, actually not even LA for Italian no, that much. Just, Chicago, New York, Boston, Boston. The Jews were right by the Italians yeah. and all that. But when we came to America, my father learned English in Brooklyn on Coney Island Avenue. So he was learning it from 
Italians. Oh God! So he was like, "Hey, you doing? <laughs> How you doing out there? What's going?" You, I saw my father speak yeah, with an Israeli it. accent. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I want you to come over, but I want you to come over, but I don't. Uh, so ask the guy how you're doing and bring him the, the food from the, it's, it was just really funny that he just spoke, speaks like a, like little Mo. Little Mo. But with an Israeli accent. Yep. That's hysterical. So, such a funny people. I love Italians. Me yeah. too. I love How excited Italians. are you for your whole touring thing? Yeah. Do you have, who you travel with when you travel? Um, Usually just me, but I mean, it's like, it depends, like. I have Caitlin Palufo open up for me a lot. Evan Williams open up for me a lot. Marie Faustin or um, Ethan Simmons. But right now, it's like everything's changing really quickly. And so I'm doing I'm doing a lot of clubs, but I'm starting a, an official theater tour in January. So that will be a whole... It's exciting. Yeah, it's like a whole... Oh, you love it. It's thing. so much fun. Yeah, and I'm doing... I'm already starting some theaters, but I'm doing like... Like this week, I'm doing... Miami and that's going to be fun because my friend Sean and his his boyfriend Jamie are there. They're from Miami, so I'll be the able Miami to play. Improv. Yeah, yeah, that room it's is a fun. great room. Yeah, I've never yeah. done it. La you know what's crazy is last year I canceled my shows in Miami because I only sold forty tickets. And this what? year I've I'm because of COVID or because sold of... out shows. Wow, no, because no one was amazing. coming to my show. Oh wow, I was a loser. <laughs> and no, uh, you we saw we I I hopped on your show in Boston. Well, that's when everything started to change. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was, that a was whole. It that, was do a, you think? What do you attribute to that change? To do you think Andrew Schultz? Really, I'm dead serious. I did Andrew. I was like kind of dead in the water in my career one year ago in July. Wow. And I remember being frustrated. I worked on. I was trying to play the game essentially. I was trying to play like, like I'll try and get a Netflix special, an HBO special. I'll try and write this TV show. I'll work with writers. I'll try and audition. I was like doing everything that I thought I was supposed to be doing, and everything was just like a resounding no. Like HBO, Netflix, were like no to your special and wow. then I was spent two years writing this show with these brilliant writers and we went to pitch and I was like no just because I had no heat I had no heat I had no do you think it was because of the sundress it was the sundress they <laughs> hated it and that was one of the notes they had and I was like I'll insist <laughs> but um, I actually came to like a point where I was like I actually don't even know at this point how I'm going to make money I'm not selling tickets on the road okay. nothing and I've always been friends with Andrew and he's always been really nice to me we've always had really good conversations and I called him and I was like, hey, Andrew. I was like, but well, first I texted him. I was in Italy and I was like, I just, it might, you know, like sometimes it's, it feels almost like fate. Like I just was like, yeah. I have to talk to Andrew Schultz. Yes. There was no other person to speak to. So I texted him. I was like, hey, and I never asked for help. And I said, Same. Andrew, can I talk to you? Like, I really need to talk to you about career stuff. And he was like, when are you free tomorrow? And I was oh, wow. like, I'm free at these times. Great. I'll call you then. He called me. He spoke to me for almost two and a half hours. That's so nice. And it That's was so, so nice. inspiring. And he was like, take control of your life. Take control of everything. Fuck everybody else. Put your stuff up online. I'll show you how to put your stuff up online. I'll tell you exactly how to do it. I'll tell you how to do reels. I'll tell you how to do TikTok. I'll tell you how to do captions. I'll tell you how to do everything. And the uh, like two weeks later, he just out of the blue was like, can you come on my podcast? I was like, sure. Okay. Like I, I, I text him. I was like, I don't want you to think I called you to ask you to come on your podcast because I want you on my podcast. And he set me up so beautifully. He's like, I want this to be a celebration of you. People should know who you are. So he interviewed me for like two hours and posted it the next day. I woke up with 20,000 new followers. Wow. wow. And I was like, Great. oh my God. And so I was like, this is a situation when someone hand, like reaches out their hand, grab back. Yeah. So just step into fear and the unknown. So I just did everything Andrew told me to do. I would send him my reels before. And how does this look? He would say, change the captions, change this, change the hashtags, change the cover. It's like he, he built it into me. Like, this is the best way to do it. This is the times you should do it. Now go do it. And so I started doing it. So like, I would say late September, October, I got into the rhythm of like, Doing reels, the special that HBO and Netflix didn't want, I just cut up. That's when I'm wearing that stupid yellow yeah. duck yeah, yeah, shirt. Yeah. Love it. And I just cut it up and I put the captions on and I was at like 200,000 followers and I'm now about to hit 700,000. Yeah. Wow. In less than a year. It's amazing. And I was like, okay. And it's, I literally contribute all of it to Andrew because he was like, believe in yourself. 
fuck everybody else and do this for yourself. And I was like, oh my God, Andrew, you're so inspiring. And, wow. and he keeps being nice to me. He's like, I'm doing Radio City Music Hall. Can you close out my show oh, yeah, in saying. New York, New York? Yeah. And I was like, okay. <gasps> That's it, amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. I got, and I got COVID right after it was, I mean, <laughs> like, a, like a, a week later. But I mean, it was, it was amazing because it was, and I don't know how to like, repay him i don't know what to do to repay him i'm like just God, keep doing so what you're doing on. just being being uh you don't don't worry about repaying him but you were a, a way for him to help and he gets he'll get his back this might not be from you right but you you help and you don't expect it back from the people you help well he i think he saw the same thing happen with him when he went on joe rogan and joe rogan put him in front of an audience that he might not have been in front of. And right. he had already been so smart about putting stuff up online, putting it up regularly. Him, I would contribute, like, comics putting their stuff up online was Andrew Schultz, then Sam Morell. Like, those mm -hmm. two were the yeah. first I saw. I'm sure there were others, so please forgive me, everybody. But in my mind yeah. as a comedian, those were the first two that started putting their stuff up online. And I just was like, I didn't realize it was a tool to do it that way and now right. i really enjoy it and now i've hired chris Cazo, who's my like full-time social media guy producer follows me around helps me make all these videos of pasta and all this fun like walking around the mall of america yeah, like i fly stuff. him out and he, we just are having a blast and i he's so talented and i'm like andrew that was another thing he said he's like you've got to get someone to work with you full-time and Mark, one of his producers, told me the same thing. This is so business talking. But it's it, so great to it, hear, yeah. It, it just it changed my life and I feel like a breath of fresh air. And I feel like, oh my God, I can pay rent. Oh my God, I can relax now. Like, and I'm really enjoying doing shows and starting it's to do so theaters. Wonderful. And it's like cool. I'm like, ah, That's you know. Exciting. It's, yeah, I'm excited. I don't know. But I mean, you know. I think your success is his thank you. Yeah. Like you think? Yeah, of course. Yes. Like that's the joy is to like be able to see you get like all of the appreciation that you deserve. I mean, you're so insanely talented. Yeah. There's nobody like you. I just listened to him on Tim Dillon's podcast. Tim Dillon makes me and, Oh my God, uh, I, who I love, love Tim Dillon. Dillon. And <laughs> he, yes. Andrew talks about that specifically about helping people. Yeah. And um, it was really interesting to hear his side of it. And well, he said, I agree. I, I watched that episode. Yeah. Tim Dillon makes me laugh. Tim, Tim Dillon, Dillon is so is funny. Is Tim Dillon said one of the funniest things. Terrible. Years ago, we were starting what? open mics together and we were at the creek and we were, yeah. we were with the creek and cave. <laughs> Love the creek and cave. And creek and cave really did start so many wonderful, talented people. Wait, and I don't, what is that? It, it, Creek in the Cave is now in Austin, Texas. It's okay. a club in Austin run, run by Rebecca Trent. And okay. she opened up a club in Long Island City years ago and it became like a comics like clubhouse, like just like an incubation for comics who couldn't get stage time to discover their uh -huh. talents and explore them uh, explore themselves. So we were at an open mic on a Friday at six o'clock and <laughs> Tim Dillon. This is when um, Chelsea Lately was really popular. And yes. Stuff. So t I went up on stage and did something and Tim was right after me and Tim goes on stage and he goes, I just want everyone to know next week you're going to see Mateo Lane on Chelsea Handler talking about Miley Cyrus and I'll be hanging dead from the George Washington Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was Tim Dillon from the beginning. You know, oh I'm always, and that's so funny. You look at comics you started with and where we are and it just like no matter where you align comedically, looking at someone like, you know, I see Suba or Tim or Michelle Wolf or, you know, all these people you were doing open mics with and you're like, oh, my God, like we're still doing it. Like, yeah. fuck, I can't believe it. You know, it's so crazy. Yes, it's years and years and you see comics in different levels, the comics you began with. Tom, Tom Pop and I used to host at the cellar together, you know. I love Tom Pop. Yeah, I love, he's so funny. That so picture of you at the cellar, I'm like, you better work, Modi. What was that? One outside where it's like, Modi, your picture's With the up shirt there. off. No, your shirt's on. <laughs> The outside the cellar. Okay. You're on oh, the yeah. wall with like Keith and yes, Marina yeah, yeah, and Gary yeah, 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 and Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was, uh, yeah, but there is yeah. a picture of you shirtless in the montage that plays before the show starts. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Manny, the, uh, when he was alive, he used to go into different things he was into. So he was into cameras for a minute. Manny, the uh, Manny, owner the, of the, the club. The owner of, of Noam's no, father. Noam's father. And he used to have a camera on people. So he was into cameras for, for a hot minute. 
when they became when the digital cameras came out, he bought the most expensive one. And he took pictures everywhere and nonstop and all of the and so he would come in, I'm doing a set, and he's just like click, 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 click. And I just took off, I go, here, man, here you go. <laughs> yeah, with my shirt off. And he's just like, ah, this is it. There he goes. And he walks oh, out. I love yeah. That. Yeah. Then there was one time where Bob, this is I it used to be on my website. I had this, this is a picture of um Chris Rock, Seinfeld, and um Robin Williams were sitting at the comics table and Manny was there and he never wanted to bother them. So, but he had the camera. I go, Manny, get that camera all ready to go. Right. And I walked in, I sat behind, I'll show you this picture. I, I sat behind good. Robin Williams talking to Chris Rock and I'm, and I'm like, <laughs> like that, as if, you know, as if I, I was like, I, you, you know, and Manny had a click, click, click. And that's like <laughs> one of the greatest pictures on my website, on my old website when I had like me yeah. and other people. And it was, uh, man, yeah. So there's a picture of me with no shirt. Work. Work. Same. Yes, yes. <laughs> you have an they, with no I mean, shirt. when you were on Chelsea Handler, they put that picture of you. They did. They put my thotty ass underwear picture up at that damn Ace Hotel that, thank God, I moved. Yeah, you, I mean, they beamed that picture into everyone's living rooms. One of my favorite, great. one of my favorite seller memories is, it was New Year's, and we were all on stage, and we were, uh, and at New Year's, everyone sings Old Lang Syne. But Will Sylvins was singing it. Oh wow! And it was like, Whoa, <laughs> look, like it was so horrible. And we were on stage, and I all you hear is Michelle Wolf grab a mic and go, "Give the microphone to Mateo." <laughs> <laughs> the Elmo. It was like, okay, I feel like I'm accepted now. It's a comedy seller. This feels great. Oh my god, I used to love doing the New Year's Eve shows there. I've never mm. been there for New Year's. No, because I work. I, I I book a gig, but it's but it's a it's so insane. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so where can they find you? Is that it? We're done. Um, Unless we're you say anything else you want, I, I don't know. I'm sure. I'm fun chit chatting, but you're right. I shouldn't. You guys are paying for this time. Um, no, this is money wealth well spent. Yeah. Uh, what was the question? Where can they find you? What's going yeah, on? What? The papaya stand is six seven. <laughs> 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 um, you can find me at Mateo Lane on Instagram and TikTok. Tickety talk, tickety tick tock, and you should go. You guys should go to his shows. Because yeah, they're when does amazing. this air? This Probably will air next Wednesday, next week. Okay, something. so I'll be in. Uh, yeah, where will I you? I don't know. I'm. Oh, go to his website. It's so hard Mateo to know where you com. Yeah, yeah, That's and it's it. such a fun show. Oh my god, I had the best time in. No, in oh, that's Boston. what I was gonna say. You should come back anytime you I want. I will. I will. It's Seriously. fun. It's fun. I loved watching it because you came off stage like you had just done like meth. Like you were so <laughs> excited and high. it was like all, it was like fun. All of us together doing these shows in Boston. Like you would you killed. It was. I was like, this is a blast. That was a fun. It night. was a it was a crazy night. It was a night where. Um, Tim Dillon, Tim Dillon was performing in Boston. You were performing in Boston, and you had, had a show, a show in, Boston. in Boston. And then what's his name that opens for me? Elon. Um, Elon Altman. Elon had a Altman show in was Boston. doing some other small show, and so, he came to my show, and and I came to your show. But it's funny. I got on your stage in your show, and it's like four hundred gay men, four hundred gay men, and I walk on. And the funniest thing was backstage. I'm like, what am I gonna do here? And they're like, do this and that, and do just be yourself and do that. I'm like, I'm looking at these comics. They've been doing comedy fifteen years, telling me. I said, I I'm going to be okay out there. I was saying to in my own head, what am I going to do out there, right? And um, and I went out there and I did like super Jewy. So like, oh, there's a Jew on stage. And then hit them with gay. Uh -huh. And then hit them with like, they were like, where where'd that come from? And, then, <laughs> and next in Mateo. And it was so much fun. It was really, really. It so, was and we sat in the back for the rest of your show. And they just loved you. They yeah. chalished you. They chalished you. What's chalished you? I don't know. How do you say? I, uh, they just savored it. They savored you. They, they're like, mm, Mateo's here. Kite's like, good. Mm. Kite's good. Well, that's yeah, they yeah I, mean, I, I have to say my audiences are really fun and I always get compliments from the wait staff every single week the wait staff comes up to me we just have to say that your audience <laughs> oh my God. so nice they tipped so well yeah Modi gets so the well same paid. comments I Not get the, the same. opposite the wait staff comes over did that really just happen <laughs> They they were they were re they were redesigning the whole club. Your they audience were comes furniture. in, and it's the group. The draft, the too close to this door, too far from that door. Not here. I don't want. We're together. That is this the only chairs you have? The the waist is like. Yeah. Did that just happen? <laughs> but oh my god, that's um, so funny. I would love to go to one of your shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it, only see each other at the cellar, so it's I rare know. when you see other comics like 
in their element doing their own show, right? Rather than just like this motley crew that's sort of like running in and out of the fat black. Or right, right. So M M Marina Franklin started coming to my to my shows. Love she used Marina to love just to watch, just to learn all the I Jewish stuff. And uh, her and I play Fortnite together. She's also a Fortnite person? Her, me, Yamanika, Jordan Rock. I'm trying to think of the other comics that play Fortnite. Wow. Uh, yeah. Should I, should, I, should I learn Fortnite? No. No, it's, I can't imagine mm -hmm. anything. No. What, you, what, uh, what is I, this cock block of Fortnite? He doesn't have the patience for Fortnite. Are you kidding me? Uh, no, I can't. It would be fun, though. It, we all played Fortnite It would with be each funny. Other. But it's, you, you're chasing them. <laughs> okay, we're not, we're not I take it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, never mind. it's a huge learning curve with Fortnite. It's okay. like one of the most overwhelming games. No, I, I, yeah, I can't play it. It's too much. Um, and with me, I am uh, on modilive.com. Lots of stuff happening. Next week, we are um, in. Um, I have no idea. Um, I know that the, co the, the Chosen Comedy Festival is happening, and we are uh, August 16th at the Coney Island Amphitheater. That's the main show. There's going to also be a show the following day at the Comedy Cellar. Um, I'm trying to get Esty to have the, na the name of the show called um, The Book, the of, book of Esty. Because oh. it's, it's a book in the, in the Bible, The Book of Esty, and she books the show. So. That's cute. Yeah. She's we so, love a play on words. I love Esty. a little play on words, uh, yes. Have you had Esty on this show? No. We had she no, rarely um, does interviews. I'm like, Esty, you're really so interesting. It. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, I heard you once on an interview and you were so interesting. She's like... <laughs> well, last night at the Comedy mm -hmm. Cellar, she was interviewed by Chris Rock and Kevin Hart. Yeah, so I was there. With a were you guys we were there? there? We were there too. I mean, I got there late. I got there like Everybody was there last night. Everyone was, and their mom was insane was at the last, last night. Everybody was in there. And then Chris Rock and uh, Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart walked in. Kevin, of course, so sweet to me again. And uh, and and they sat there at the table and she's in and we said to her before, because she was hanging out with us before she did the interview. And I said to her, you know, Leo called you the Anna Wynn of comedy. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's no on the show. He called. Remember on the show one time. He no, called it not this show. And she said, "I think the hype around me is more than it really is. I'm just, I've just been around so long." But what she but says she, goes, and yeah, what she, it, but she's, she's, yeah, she's a tastemaker. She's no. a gatekeeper. She's gatekeeper, the, tastemaker. She's she, and she's good, and she's. Yeah. She, they're doing, fair though. That's what I said. Yeah. To the seller is like, if you're funny, you work. Yep. There's a lot of other places like, oh, you did something for Politics, me. You can yeah. do that. It's political. The, the seller oh, you can like, bring people in, or you can, yeah. The right, seller doesn't need you to bring in. She used to always call me. You know, I will tell you one thing about Esty. She used to always call me when she, people would call her. Hi, we need it. We have a Jewish event. Who do you suggest? And she always calls me. I go, Esty, can I pay you? How much can I can I give you a percentage of this? Never, never. She would I mean, never ever take anything, yeah. and um. And it, was, it's a, it says a lot. It says a lot about a person. I so, called her a lot during the pandemic just to check on her. So did I. So did I. She was going through it. Yeah. And then the podcast, you guys had that podcast, your, your, your podcast, and they would come yeah. on. You, you want the comedy from the Comedy Seller podcast. No, well, it's next week they're going to make us wear the masks again. I'm like, I can't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> she became, she like trumped Fauci in advice on, on, on pandemic. As he was like, this is what's going to happen next week. This yeah. is closing. I'm going to tell him not to wear this. I'm going to. Cause Noam was like insane. Like he was reading every single article. Yeah. That's Noam. Out of every, I mean, it was completely nuts. I was like locked in a house with him for 18 months. I didn't he, see anybody else. By the way, I spoke to him today. This is Noam, the owner of the comedy cellar. And he gave you a very big compliment. So I told him we're doing the comedy festival. And he said, oh, is, uh, is uh, Periel hosting it? I think she's a little blue and a little, a little green for this. <laughs> and he goes, how's she doing? I go, she's really funny. And, and then he goes, and you know, she, she has a personality, which you can't learn on stage. Aww. She has a personality. Which is a very nice thing for him That's to say. Nice. He would never say it to my face. So it's nice at least he's <laughs> yeah, You guys it have a crazy him. relationship. <laughs> yeah. You and Juanita and Juanita looks amazing. I was just gonna say oh, Juanita the wow. other day. Wow. Like, Juanita, you look so fucking good. Wow, she looked great yesterday. Came from Greece. You know, she comes up to me, she goes, Hi, fellow trophy wife. I'm like, I'll take it. Trophy <laughs> wife work. <laughs> work. You Dad. better work, Juanita. No, but she, she was in Greece. She was in Greece when we were in Greece. 
You and guys she, Greece vacation. I need to come to fucking Greece with you guys. That well, a, you're gonna. I take know, me to Rome. right? Like, take, and people are, take and us people are like, with you. Do you have any advice for? Uh, we're coming to Greece. Do you have any advice for us? Yeah, find a friend with a yacht. Yeah, that's the <laughs> advice. Are you kidding me? The advice is get on a yacht. Your friends get, with Onassis. What? Was yeah, that? literally, we we did. Um yes. and um. But she looks amazing. She's and amazing. She, I said to her, did you go shopping? Did you go because all the all the people we know they go to Greece and Europe now, especially since the dollar is so mm -hmm. strong. They're coming back with Hermes. And she's like, What am I gonna wear Hermes? Who the hell? And of course, no, I'm like, Hermes, what's that? Yeah. I go, Hermes. The, the, he goes, Oh, that's how you say it? <laughs> he, he said, I thought it was called Hermes. Yeah. Her <laughs> Hermes. Me, me, Noam, and uh, Liz got into a fight the other day, how to say a bottle of wine, how it's pronounced in Italian. And we were arguing. I forget the bottle now, but he's like, it said this way. And we're like, no, it said this way. He's like, I've looked it up. We're like, we lived there. <laughs> like, it's so funny. It was cute. So when he, so that was Juanita's the takeaway amazing. She's amazing. She's the best. She saved my life during COVID, really. She's just so fun. She's very bubbly. I mean, I, my big thing during COVID was I played Clue with Juanita and Aww. Steve, because Steve basically oh, moved Steve. in with yes. Gnome and Juanita. And we played Clue every night. That's cute. <laughs> Yeah, I, over the cellar, or over the summer at the cellar, I moved uh, around it, and um, yeah, you moved next door. You moved across the street. People. I don't want people to know where I live. I moved in near the, the area. Cellar. <laughs> he but moved into the I, okay. the twenty twenty like right when twenty twenty hit. Not to get like really serious, but it was like I had a close friend just commit suicide, mm. lost my job, lived in a shitty apartment in the Upper East Side, had a horrible landlord, and got bed bugs all within two months. Wow. Oh wow! So wow. I was like, this is I little I. That's the lowest I ever. I remember feeling like this is I don't. It can't get any worse than this. And I found an apartment because my lease was up June 2020. And so I found like perfect timing. So I found an apartment. I remember the New York real estate agent picked up the phone, this woman named Jillian, and she was the most New York thing I've ever heard ever. She picked it, she goes, I've never said this before and I'm never going to say it again. Where do you want to live? <laughs> and I said the village. I said I oh. loved, I used to live there in a tenement apartment where I had a bathtub in the kitchen. <laughs> and so she was like, okay. I looked at like 14 different apartments in a day. I mean, just everything was available. Anything right, I right, wanted. right, right, right. So I found this apartment near the cellar. And you nailed the timing. Nailed the timing. Nailed so. it. And every, this is a summer that I'll never have again. Everyone left. And it was me, Liz, and Jose at the cellar because they yeah. opened up the cellar for food. Yeah. It was like the 1970s, what you see in New York, hang out on the street all day, and you got nothing to do. So I'd come downstairs at 12, me, yeah. Liz, and Jose make cappuccino. And we would literally sit there outside all day, like talking about people we see on the street, planning dinner. So we, I would cook dinner in the oh, cellar wow. kitchen. Wow. And then it would be like, okay, Keith's going to come over tonight. Oh. And then we're going to get this. So literally Keith would come over every wow. night. And it was us four. Like I, Joe would come by, Dante would come by. And it was like every day. And I remember we like her, me and Jose texted each other the next summer, like a great, great sadness. We were like, oh, we're never going to, have that again. Wow. Oh, what a special. So yeah, but when you were doing it, did you realize this is we a special? Loved it. It's we were so growing a garden. Like we were looking at our plants. Like we would pick who's going to get so the amazing. melons so we could have um, melon with tajin and so lime. Amazing. And just like, I mean, and we were like, oh, there's the wheelchair guy with the big dick and there's the runner we see <laughs> and there's that. Like, you know, the and once in a while we would show up. Once in a while we'd walk by. We 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 always tried to, uh, whenever we were walking in the city, yeah. to walk by the cellar and we'd walk. just to say hi to whoever was there there and just uh yeah and we were running a club it was so great it was so yeah yeah that was the best. so important to when you're in doing enjoy those moments yeah it's so important one night and then i'll i'll get out of your guys' hair but one night it was <laughs> please please we would please. go once a week me dante um uh liz and keith and joe um where do we go we went to uh we went to ribalta my favorite pizzeria and they, we were the only ones at the restaurant. We were yeah. outside under those weird makeshift tents before they started building oh, yeah. like the FEMA tents, those FEMA tents. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it started pouring rain. So we're all there. It's pouring rain on us. And, and we were like, Dante goes, isn't this nice? Like, we're not rushed to go to shows right now. Like, we're literally just sitting and enjoying pizza in the rain and no one's yep. in New York. And I was yeah. like, this kind of is like an amazing it was a bizarre moment. Time. Yeah. 
Wait, yes. let's not gloss over your favorite pizza place because I feel like that's a major piece of advice. Rivalta, they know me. That I walk in there. Where is that? I've never even heard of it. 12th Street and Broadway, Kitty Corner to the Strand. Only Italians go. Oh, so of course, those really? Places. I don't think I've ever even clocked that place. Me neither. Yeah, you guys aren't Italian. <laughs> All right. Well, so really, we noted. should all go. Noted. Okay, we're all in. It's amazing, amazing pizza. It's it's Napolitano, so like the uh, company d uh, based from Naples, where pizzas from. They have to certify other pizzerias that want to be vera pizza, which means true pizza, to be authenticated as if they're actual real pizza. Just say the mafia. Just, Just say the mafia. The, the mob. The pizza Nostra. mob. Actually, Gamora yeah. in Naples. No, but they they have to use everything has to come from Naples. Everything has to come in. Wow. If you sell ranch wow. dress, dressing, you're like fined a thousand dollars. Oh, They'll that's take amazing. it away. <laughs> Everyone there's from Italy. Like it's great. There's this a Sicilian waiter who's gay and he's so nice. We're always like kind of gossiping in Italian. Yeah, yeah. But he's so Sicilian looking. I'm like, I'm like, do people know you're Italian? He goes, everyone thinks I am Brazilian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, <laughs> Mexican, blah blah blah. And I'm like, what happens when you say they're Italian? He goes, everyone loves Italians. <laughs> like that's so funny. They do, and everyone loves Mateo. Well, yes, please. I love Mateo. Oh, grazie. I love you I guys. Love Thanks for having me on. I'm so happy. I'm we so mean, Emma can get our schedule aligned. Y'all should come on our podcast. Absolutely. Uh, we're always Absolutely. all over the place. Yes, well, this is a, a, and this place is really fun. Yeah, yeah well, I, love it. I don't know how I look. I recommended it to who? You. To, to Leo. Leo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. tell if my, it's just that it's you being interviewed by a nose. I It's just, <laughs> uh, there we go. We'll figure out the seating. Okay, good. Well, good. We're, it's fun though. And you know. it's such it's so convenient and close. Yeah, y'all are so close. Yeah, yeah so we you don't have to go to yeah. mid. Oh, we were in the pit of like I was port, in the, same the place. bowels of like Port Authority. Yeah, yeah. it was horrible. A good place. They were very nice professional. People. They were very nice, very but nice the location people. was harsh. Yeah, for us, <laughs> it was harsh. <laughs> it was harsh. <laughs> Thank you all for listening Thanks, and everyone. and Bye. clocking in, and we'll see you at the live shows. Love you all. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.